Vaitcharyanuvananam Etat this he certainly Atura Chatanam of those whose minds are always full of cares and anxieties. Matra objects of sense enjoyment. Sparsha senses, ichaya, by desires, moho, always, baba sindhu, the ocean of nations, plava, boat, drishta, experienced, haricharya, Activities of Hari, the personality of Godhead. Anuvarnanam, constant recitation. Translation, it is personally experienced by me that those who are always full of cares and anxieties due to desiring contact of the senses with their objects can cross the ocean of Neshines on a most suitable boat. The constant chanting of the transcendental activities of the Personality of Godhead. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. The symptoms of a living being is that he cannot remain silent even for some time. He must be doing something thinking of something or talking about something. Generally, the materialistic man think and discuss about subjects which satisfy their senses. But as these things 
are but as these things are exercised under the influence of the external illusory energy, such sensual activities do not actually give them any satisfaction. On the contrary, they become full with cares and anxieties. This is called maya, or what is not. That which cannot give them satisfaction is accepted as an object for satisfaction. So, Sri Narada Muni, by his personal experience, says that satisfaction for such frustrated beings engaged in sense gratification is to chant always the activities of the Lord. The point is that the subject matter only should be changed. No one can check the thinking activities of a living being, nor the feeling, willing, or working processes. But if one wants actual happiness, one must change the subject matter only. Instead of talking of the politics of a dying man, one might discuss the politics administered by the Lord himself. Instead of relishing activities of the cinema artists, one can turn his attention to the activities of the Lord with his eternal associates like the gopis and lakshmis. The almighty personality of Godhead by his causeless mercy descends on the earth and manifests activities almost on the line of the worldly man but at the same time, extraordinarily, because he is almighty, he does so for the benefit of all conditioned souls, so that they can turn their attention to transcendence. By doing so, the conditioned soul will gradually be promoted to the transcendental position and easily cross the ocean of Neshines, the source of all miseries. This is stated from personal experience by such an authority as Sri Narada Muni. And we can have the same experience also if we begin to follow in the footsteps of the great sage, the dear most devotee of the Lord. Translation again. It is personally experienced by me that those who are always full of cares and anxieties due to desiring contact of the senses with their objects can cross the ocean of nations on a most suitable boat, the constant chanting of the transcendental activities of the personality of Godhead. Om Jnana Timarandasya Jnana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Panchakaupatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Namo Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasade Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So this verse is spoken by Sri Narada Muni. He is instructing Srila Vyasadeva and he's instructing all of us in the process of how we can actually find real satisfaction. Satisfaction is not obtainable in this material world just through gratifying the material senses. We will never be satisfied by trying to serve the demands of our senses. But if we turn our attention to the Lord, and use the senses in the service of the Lord, then we can find real fulfillment. So this is personally realized by Sri Narada Muni, as he says, Hari Charyanu Varnanam, constant recitation 
of the pastimes and topics of the Supreme Lord can give one real satisfaction. We're, we all want to be satisfied and we're just trying to find the satisfaction in the wrong way. We have not understood the process. But Sri Narada Muni describes, he said, by his own experience he has understood. So, we can also try the same thing. We can try to experience ourselves, try to serve the material energy, try to enjoy the material world, try to find some little bits of pleasure in this material world, but ultimately we will never be satisfied. The other process is rather than trying to experience for ourselves, is take the message from the authority. The Narada Muni is our spiritual teacher. He's one of our great Acharyas. He's one of the Mahajans, right? He's, 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 a, he's teaching us a process by which we can actually awaken our transcendental consciousness. We cannot stop the activities of the senses, but we can purify the activities of the senses. And the purification process comes about by connection with the Supreme Lord. It is the Supreme Lord who can actually give us the purity and the pleasure which we are looking for. We want happiness, but we are trying to find it in the wrong way. And we want to take the message which is given to us by Sri Narada Muni. Narada Muni, of course, Narada Pancharatra, he is teaching particularly about the importance of worshipping the deity. It's also one of his processes, but not only does he worship the deity, Narada is always chanting the glories of the holy name. Lord Krishna said, Naham Tishtani Vaikunte, Naham Tishtani Vaikunte, Yogi Namri Daeshuva, Tatratishtani Narada, Yatra Gayanti Madbhakta. That I am not in Vaikuntha and I am not in the hearts of the yogis, but I am wherever my devotees like Narada are chanting my holy name. So Narada Muni, the eternal spaceman, he travels constantly. And wherever he goes, he's chanting the holy name. He's distributing the glories of the Lord. He comes here to Navadvip Dham. He preaches to the devotees here also. Uh, Suvarna Sen met Narada Muni. We heard when we go there to Suvarna Sen's palace, we hear how Narada Muni came there and enlightened him, told him to give up his fruit of activities. So Narada Muni is very busy traveling everywhere. He can go to the spiritual world, he can go everywhere here in this world. But his business is always the same, preaching the glories of the Lord. He is one of our acharyas in the line of disciplic succession. So today, of course, is a very important day because it's, uh, uh, first of all, it's Vasant Panchami which is considered like the first day of spring. And it's also Saraswati Puja. So many students and teachers, they will all perform their puja of Goddess Saraswati. And uh, it's also the appearance day of Vishnu Priya Devi. Vishnu Priya Devi is the pleasure potency of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And we know, of course, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted the renounced order of life at the age of 24. And at that time, Vishnu Priya was a young woman of only 16 years of age. So from the age of 16, she became a widow. And uh, she executed many austerities. She, it said that she would only eat as many grains of rice as she chanted rounds of japa every day. And over in Navadweep, 
they have also the deity of uh, Mahaprabhu, right? The Dameshwar Mahaprabhu. Thank you, Dameshwara. So uh, that's said to be worshipped by Vishnu Priya. There's a pastime that in Ramlila, Lord Ramachandra, he was left without Mother Sita. Mother Sita returned to the earth and Lord Ramachandra was the king of Ayodhya. So the king of Ayodhya has many duties to perform, different sacrifices, and it's customary that at the time of performing a sacrifice, the king will sit with his wife. The wife must also be there. But Lord Ramachandra had made a vow, Eka Padnivrat, only one wife. And Mother Sita had returned to the earth. So what does Lord Ramachandra do? He has a deity made of Mother Sita. And when he is performing yagya, he will have the deity of Mother Sita sit by his side. And in this way, his wife was present for the yagya. So that was in the Treta Yuga. Lord Ramachandra had Mother Sita in the form of the deity. And we see in the Kali Yuga, the situation was reversed. Vishnu Priya was worshipping her deity of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So that's an interesting pastime which took place. Vishnu Priya was extremely chaste. It said no man could see her face. She never showed her face to people. She kept herself covered. You know, people would think, oh, she, must have been, she was a consort of Sri Ch 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 Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We must see her. We want to see her. She must look very beautiful or something. But she never showed her face to anyone. Covered, kept herself covered. Very chaste. And she remained in this world for a long time. I think uh, 96 when she left the body. So for 80 years she was a widow. And she was worshipping Dameshwar Mahaprabhu. So today is her appearance day. Today is also the disappearance day of Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. And Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur played a very important role in our Gaudiya Vaishnav Sampradaya because he wrote commentaries on so many uh, scriptures, particularly Srimad Bhagavatam. His commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam is very, very important, very valuable for us. And Baladeva Vijabhusan actually came to Vrindavan and he spent a long time with Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. Now Baladeva Vijabhusan was from the Madhva Sampradaya and he came over to Vrindavan and he got the association of Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. And from Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, uh, he learned the Gaudiya Vaishnava philosophy. And then later on it happened that the challenge came from the Ramanandis in Jaipur that you Gaudiya Vaishnavas, you don't have any commentary on Vedanta Sutra. Because the Ramanandis were in Jaipur, they were preaching to the king of Jaipur. The king of Jaipur was a Gaudiya Vaishnava. And they, were worth, they have Govindaji there in Jaipur. And he was a Gaudiya Vaishnava. So the Ramanandis were preaching to him and they were trying to get him to come to their Sampradaya, to their line. And they said, these Gaudiya Vaishnavas, they don't even have a commentary on Vedanta Sutra. Every other Sampradaya has a commentary on Vedanta Sutra. These Gaudiya Vaishnavas, they don't even have a commentary. They're, not, they're bogus. It's not a bona fide Sampradaya. You should come with us, join us, take Diksha from us. Like this. So the challenge came to Vrindavan. At that time, of course, uh, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur was very old and in poor health. He, they wanted him to go to Jaipur to meet the challenge. But he wasn't well and he wasn't in, in, in his old age, he was not able to do it. But his student, Baladeva Vijabhusan, was there. 
and he sent Baladeva Vidyabhusan to Jaipur and he went there and he wrote his commentary which is called Govinda Bhashya. He prayed to the Govinda deity and inspired by Govinda deity he compiled his commentary on Vedanta Sutra Govinda Bhashya. And Srila Prabhupada dedicates our Bhagavad Gita. Uh, he acknowledges this Govinda Bhashya in his Bhagavad Gita the, in the foreword uh, in appreciation of Baladeva Vijabhusan for compiling this commentary. So initially they were saying we don't need commentary. We have Vyasadeva's commentary. Srimad Bhagavatam. This is the commentary on Vedanta. But they were saying, no, no, everybody's got their commentary. You also should have a Why you don't have commentary? Right? Ramanuja had written commentary. Nimbarka had written commentary. Balaba had written commentary. Shankaracharya had commentary. Vinat. Where is your Gaudiya Vaishnava? People, nothing. You don't know anything. So, Baladeva Vidyabhusan nicely presented this uh, commentary, which was based on what he had learned from Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. So today is the disappearance day of Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. And today is also the appearance day of some wonderful devotees. One devotee is called Raghunandan Thakur. Raghunandan Thakur was one of the associates in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. Uh, he was from a village nearby here. What's the name of that village? Where he's from? Anyway, Ramananda, uh, Raghunandan was the son of a devotee. His father was a devotee called Makunda. And Makunda had a brother called Narahari. They were all devotees. And they were all very much loved by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So it was Raghunandan who was left by his father to worship the deity. Father told him, I have to go, you have to do the puja today, you make the offering to Gopal. I'm going, I have to go away, you have to make the offering. They said this is very important in our family, this deity has been a long time, every day we must make the offering, today is your turn. And the Makunda left and Raghunandan was left with the deity and when he went and offered to the deity, he saw, he saw deity was not eating. So he coerced the deity that you have to eat. You have to eat. If you don't eat, my father will not be pleased. Father told me you have to take the offering. I have to make the offering. If you don't eat, it will be very bad. And so deity ate. And when father came home, then he asked Raghunandan, so did you make the offering? Yes, yes father, made the offer. Give me some prasadam. And Raghunandan said, there's no prasadam. And father said, what? You've, you've, you've eaten it all? He said, no, deity had, deity had everything. There's no prasadam. And so father was surprised, he thought, my son, he doesn't tell lies. He's, he's always truthful. So, next day, he said, you make the offering again today. <laughs> and father was watching and he saw, saw the deity coming to take the offering from Raghunandan. So, Makunda was greatly impressed that, oh, my son is such a great devotee that he can get Krishna to come and eat the prasada. So, on one occasion, Chaitanya, Mah Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked Makunda, he said, So Makunda, are you the father of Raghunandan or is Raghunandan your father? Right? And Makunda thought for a minute, he said, Yes, he said, actually Raghunandan is my father. He was the son, you know, physically, but he, Ra, Makunda replied to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, said, Raghunandan is my father, I am like his son. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, yes, very nice. He said, this is a fact. 
one who gives you Krishna, one who gives Krishna, who brings Krishna into your life, then he is like your father. Right? We think like that, you know, the spiritual teachers, my spiritual father, and the spiritual teacher thinks of the disciple, my physical, my spiritual son, like that. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very happy to hear this from Makunda. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also gave the family instructions and he told Raghunandan, he said, your business is to be with the deity. This is, you have no other business but to serve the deity. And he told the father, Makunda, that your doctor, he said, so you treat people spiritually and materially. You continue to do your service as a doctor. Actually, Makunda was also a great devotee. They have said that uh, one day he was sitting with the Mohammedan ruler and they were sitting together and one of the servants of the Mohammedan ruler came with a peacock fan to hold it above the head of the ruler. And when Makunda saw the peacock fan, he became his ecstatic love for Krishna awakened and he fell off his seat onto the ground. And the Mohammedan ruler was surprised what had happened. And he, he also got down to look at Makunda to see what was going on. So he asked Makunda, are you okay? What happened? What's wrong? And Makunda was saying, oh yes, I have some a disease like epilepsy. Sometimes I fall down like this. But the Mohammedan ruler could actually understand it wasn't really a normal disease. It was actually the ecstasy, the bhava, which had awakened just by seeing the peacock feathers. So this is the kind of devotees who were in the association of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So today is the appearance day of Raghunandan. Oh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Raghunan, you, you worship the deity. He told Makunda, you're the doctor. And he told Narahari, you travel with the devotees and go for preaching. So he gave them all different duties. But, you know, they're all the one family. They just did service for Krishna in different ways. We have to understand the... Variety in Krishna consciousness. It's not that you have to do one thing. You can do many different things to serve Lord Krishna. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu recognized that and gave everyone facility to do service for Krishna in different ways. So today is also the appearance day of Raghunan, Raghunath Das Goswami. Raghunath Das Goswami, one of the six Goswamis. Raghunath Das was born in a very, very wealthy family here, over here in Bengal. His um, Haranya and Govardhan Majumda, they were very wealthy. It is said they were maintaining all the brahmanas in Bengal. They were giving charity to all the brahmanas, maintaining them. They were so wealthy. So Raghunath was born in that family and brought up in great opulence. So Raghunath Das, however, heard about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he became attracted to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement and he wanted to follow Lord Chaitanya. His family, therefore, got him married to a very beautiful, chaste woman you know, not a harsh speaking woman like some women, yeah. <laughs> you know. But she was very soft spoken and loving and very attractive. But he was not attracted. He wanted to join Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement. And he came to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and told Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu his desire. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave him instruction and told him 
just behave like a normal person. Don't be a sahajya. Sahajya means one who takes everything cheap. Just behave normally. And go home and live with your family and always remember Krishna and keep Krishna in your heart. But just behave like a normal person. So Raghunath Das went home and he was living at home with his family. But at the same time, in his heart, he was thinking that this life this material life of sense gratification, comfortable living, so much wealth and opulence, this is not what I want. I don't want this. It doesn't mean anything to me. And sometimes he would run away, his family would bring him back. The cat would get him back. But then it happened, Lord Nityananda Prabhu came to Panihati, and Raghunath Das went to Panihati and he got permission from his family that he could go to Panihati and he could meet Lord Nityananda. And Lord Nityananda recognized him because his family were very well known. They were giving so much wealth. They were very much respected by everyone. They were not pure devotees because they had so much wealth. Money is very contaminating. We see people when they get money sometimes, they become very contaminated. They can become very proud. They're thinking, my money. They don't understand it all belongs to Krishna. It's meant for Krishna's service. So Raghunath, he understood the real proprietor of everything. He came to Panihati and Lord Nityananda recognized Raghunath and he said, Oh, come here. I'm, today I'm going to punish you. And he said, I, your punishment is to put on a festival for all the devotees. And so we know uh, Bengal in the Panihati time, that this time of the festival, it's summer. It's pretty hot that time of the year when the Panihati festival comes. It's pretty hot. There's not a lot of vegetables and things, not a lot of variety, just some, you know, Bengal bananas, right? A lot of bananas and a lot of mangoes in the summer. And of course, rice. There's always rice. So, shira, flat rice. And the flat rice mixed with yogurt, very cooling, very tasty, satisfying. So that was the feast. Lord uh, Raghunath Das gave money, bring all the shira and all the dahi. And they brought big clay pots and they brought also mangoes and uh, bananas and condensed milk and very nice things, you know. And, and they made a nice big offering. They washed the shira in the Ganga water because Panihati is right on the banks of the Ganga. We went to Panihati one time with Prabhupada. One man was going to donate land there to us. It didn't happen, fell through, but he was thinking to give us land. Prabhupada went there, he spent the day there. We went in the morning, came back at night. Panihati, very near Kalkara, not very difficult to go there. So we have a nice temple there now of Iskon, by the grace of His Holiness Bhakti Charu Swami. He purchased a very wonderful temple there and devotees are living there now an ISKCON center. It's just right at that place, at Panihati, where the Shiradahi festival took place. Right on the banks of the Ganga. So, that's a, another wonderful contribution of His Holiness Bhakti Charu Swami. So Raghunath Das, he 
paid for everything. All the vendors heard. Oh, there's a big festival on. So they all came, everybody brought their wares, they all brought their fruits and the yogurt and the condensed milk and everything. That, and so Raghunath is buying, every, paid for everything. And they had a nice big offering. And then when they made the offering, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu manifested in his subtle form. Everyone could feel the presence of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at the time they were making the offering. Although he was not physically present, they could feel his presence. Sometimes we have these experiences, right? When you have a festival, you can feel the presence of Prabhupada. You feel Prabhupada coming. You feel Lord Chaitanya personally coming. So in Panihati, uh, Lord Chaitanya had visited there also before because Lord Chaitanya's devotees were there. Raghunath Das put on this big festival and they fed everybody. You know how we go, when we go to uh, Advaita Acharya's place, Shantipur, so many people come and take prasada. Where do they come from? We don't know. You know, they just appear from nowhere, right? So similarly, Panihati, Lord Nityananda is having a festival and Raghunath is paying for everything. Everybody hears, wow, there's a big festival and they're giving out prasadam. So a lot of people came, everybody came and everybody got prasadam and everybody was fed very nicely. Even the dogs were fed. We don't let anybody go hungry. You feed all living entities, right? Even the dogs, they should get nice prasadam. So Lord, Ch Lord Nityananda was very pleased with Raghunath and he put his lotus feet on his head and he blessed him that very soon you will be freed from this material life. And so Raghunath Das was happy. He gave money, he gave a... Uh, gold coins to Lord Nityananda's uh, secretary so that they could pay all the expenses for their traveling, for their moving around. And Raghunath Das, after the Panihati festival, he came home and he was very careful, very careful to observe the situation and wait for the right time to get freed from the bondage of material life. So it happened that one night they needed the put there was no pujari. The pujari couldn't come to wake up the deities. So they came to Raghunath Das and they said, Pujari has not walked the deities yet. He's not well. You have to get somebody to do the puja. So Raghunath said, Oh, okay. I will do I will arrange it. Raghunath Das got out from the house. It was early in the morning. Everyone was asleep. He took the opportunity to go, to leave the house, and he never came back. So that morning, they thought, where's Raghunath? And they thought, he's disappeared. Where did he go? He went to get the pujari. What, pujari? Huh? No Pujari came. What happened? Where's Raghunath? Where did he go? And then they realized he's run away from home again. So the father sends people, go and get him, bring him back. But this time Raghunath was very careful. He didn't go on the usual path. He took very special paths in the back, the back roads. They'd never find him. And so he traveled this way he got to Jagannath Puri without being detected, well, without being captured by the family. And when he got to Jagannath Puri and he came to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told him, you are very fortunate. He said, you were like an animal who had fallen into a hole which is full of stool. He said, 
that family life, material life, is just like living in a hole full of stool. I said, you're very lucky to get out of it. Usually people who fall in that hole never get out. I said, you're very fortunate. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave Raghunath Das to Swarup Damodar and he became known as Swarupas Raghunath. He was in the care of Swarup Damodar of course was the secretary of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Raghunath Das was under the instruction of Swarup Damodar and serving there. And if he had any questions, he would put the question to Swarup Damodar Goswami and Swarup Damodar would ask Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Raghunath Das wanted to know about how he should live and what should be his behavior. And Lord Chaitanya gave very important instructions. He told him that you should never speak Gramya Kata. You should never speak the talk of the village. Don't talk worldly things. And don't hear worldly things. And he told him also, don't dress in opulent clothes. And don't eat opulent food. Live simply. Later on, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also gave Raghunath Das a Govardhan Shila and a necklace of conch shells. The Govardhan Shila had been brought to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu by another devotee and Lord Chaitanya had kept it with him for many months. And Lord Chaitanya used to put it on his head and he used to put it over his eyes. And he, he was, you know, he had many intimate connection with this Govardhan Shila. So he gave this Govardhan Shila to Raghunath Das Goswami and he instructed Raghunath Das also how to worship the Govardhan Shila. And he told them, you know, water, nice pure water and manjaris from the Tausi. It's the, the best offering. Later on, Swarup Damodar Goswami also arranged that he could offer sweetmeats to the Govardhan Shila. So Raghunath Das was given the Govardhan Shila and the necklace of conch shells. He understood Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was giving him a place in Vrindavan. So uh, when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu completed his pastimes in this material world, then Raghunath Das moved, left Jagannath Puri and he went to Vrindavan. Of course, Chaitanya Charitamrita describes in detail the austerities Raghunath was undergoing in Jagannath Puri before he went to Vrindavan. How initially his family had sent money to him and they sent Brahmins to serve him because he thought, how will our son eat? He won't get good food. He needs a cook. They sent cooks, they sent money and they gave it to Raghunath. Raghunath Das, once a month, he would invite Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to come and have prasadam. But then after some time, there were no more invitations. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu inquired, what happened to Raghunath Das? He's not inviting anymore. He was inviting me before to come and have prasadam, but no more invitations are coming. And they said, no, he's already sent the people back. He sent the money back and he sent the people back. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, oh, very good, very nice. To take money from materialistic people is not very good. It's contaminating. It makes it difficult to remember Krishna. So pure brahmanas are very careful who they accept charity from. So then Chaitanya Ma asked, then how is Raghunath Das maintaining himself? They said, oh, he is standing at the door of Jagannath Mandir and he is begging there. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, oh, very good. When you go to temples, you see there's always people there. So he was standing there also waiting people to come. 
But then, after some time, he was not there. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu inquired, what happened? Where did he go? He said, oh, he, he did not like just standing there because he thought it is not very fitting that you're standing there and you're thinking, oh, this person will give me, that he gave before, they'll give again, like this. You're depending on others. So how was, he, how was he living? They said, he goes to the drain where they wash the pots from Jagannath Puri, where they wash the container, and he takes the rice which is caught at the drain, and he will wash that rice and dry it, and he will honor that rice as his prasada. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, oh, what nectar! And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally found Raghunath and went there and got some of that rice and said, just like nectar. So this is the kind of austerities Raghunath was doing. And then he went to Vrindavan and he lived in Vrindavan and he went to Radhakund because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had come there to Vrindavan and he'd, showed, he'd revealed Radhakund and they could understand Radhakund is very important that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally instructed them, this is Radhakund. So Raghunath Das was living there and he developed it. He made it into the beautiful bathing, la bathing lakes which are there today. He got charity from some wealthy man. Some man was going to Badrinath and he was carrying a lot of wealth. He wanted to take his wealth up to Badrinath and give it in charity there. But when he was on the way, he had a dream. And in his dream, he got an order. You should take this money and go to Vrindavan, give it to Raghunath. He needs the money. He will use it for some good thing. So the man took the dream as an instruction of the Lord. Instead of going to Badrinath, he came down, he came to Vrindavan, he found out Raghunath. And Raghunath Das got the money and he used it to make these beautiful bathing ghats which are there today, Radha Kund and Shama Kund. Krishna arranges. Krishna provides everything. So Raghunath Das lived there at Radha Kund until a very old age. People could not understand how he was living. Hardly he ever ate. All he did was chant the holy name. He was so austere, so renounced, and so absorbed in the holy name. So today is his glorious appearance festival. There will be a big festival at Radha Kun. So thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki. If there's any question, otherwise it's already time for darshan. Eight o'clock. Okay. Hare Krishna.